Thank you for coming to the Viagina so early in the morning on a Saturday. Our local newspaper was, uh, has written that on Saturdays you want to sleep in, have a hearty breakfast, do some shopping or leave the town for a walk in the countryside. But there is the Viagina it was written uh, with an event called Ukrainian Histories and Stories. Um, at this event, it was written further, is incredibly scheduled for 11 o'clock. And this at the Viagina. So you see, we are not famous for early, to being early risers <laughs> or um, work on Saturday, but for you, we, we did it. The article continues, sounds like a great event. Intellectuals from Ukraine read our text about their country. And which country is more exciting than Ukraine? <laughs> Und welches Land ist spannender als die Ukraine? So, we are happy to have you here, three scholars um, from this exciting country. All three internationally well traveled, I could say. That's an exception, or it's normal for Ukraine, but I think we are still envious about this kind of international uh, academia in Ukraine. My first guest is Julia Vitsuskovitska. Uh, yeah, she's an Ukrainian historian who met her BA and MA at our partner university in Kiev at the Mohila Academy. And she worked on a PhD program at the University of Pennsylvania, partly on um, Soviet song camps. I, I read very interesting oral history. She's an, also an expert on internews Ukraine. So welcome, Julia Trudia And um, our Next second guest is Vartan Kivuladze. Vartan is a philosopher, a writer and translator, professor of Department of Theoretical and Practical Philosophy at the Taras Shevchenko National University in Kiev. He wrote books and articles on phenomenology, Husserl, Alfred Schütz, and other things. He's also well acquainted with, with German academia for a longer stay at the University of Constance and in Freiburg, as you said. So glad to have us, uh, you with us, Martin. Last but not least, um, Volodymyr Yermolenko, our third guest. He's a, also an Ukrainian philosopher, writer and journalist. He has a degree in political science. I, I uh, read from the École des Hautes Études en Sciences Sociales in Paris and teaches also in the Mohila Academy uh, in Kiev. He's the director of European projects on Internews Ukraine and journalist at Romatka Ukraine. He also coordinates Ukraine World, an informal networking group about Ukraine. So welcome you, Volodymyr, at the Weirdina. Frankfurt Oder has made it onto the list of cities you visited. Uh, beside Brussels, Strasbourg, uh, the other Frankfurt, as we say here, this Andre Frankfurt, <laughs> Berlin, Krakow, and Kiev. So I take this as a sign that we are not unknown, an unknown quantity in, in relation to Ukrainian studies. Um, and Ukraine is not terra incognita, as you <laughs> say in the introduction of the book. Um, so, the book contains 16 texts, a lot of are very um, famous, we know them. Um, let us start maybe with a, an outlook on the book uh, for our audience and maybe we can also give one book round so that everybody could a little bit um, tune in. Would you, Julia? Yes, when I, we arrived here and I was like, oh my god, it's Saturday, I wouldn't be able to gather, U University of Pennsylvania students just would not go anywhere on Saturday. <laughs> Everything is closed. Especially to Frankfurt. I mean. Frankfurt, I'm sure they will be able to, but I'm afraid that just getting out of the door for 11 a.m. would be a problem. So uh, the fact that you're here, and uh, as far as I know, some of you have, have even come from Berlin, it's really amazing. We are very grateful for your uh, interest to our project. Um, it has, uh, well, it has started uh, not so long ago, we managed to do it very fast, um, uh, but it was, well, the, the idea was hanging in the air for quite a while, I think, and uh, when I first heard that uh, um, Volodymyr and uh, our other colleague Andriy were thinking about this book, planning this book at the time, I was very excited. Because, uh, well, I spent uh, six years studying in the U.S., so when the war started in Ukraine in 2014, I was uh, in 
uh, on, on the East Coast uh, in uh, one of the probably biggest and most saturated centers of knowledge. Uh, I mean, the East Coast University, I don't know, <laughs> hub, <laughs> I would call it this way. Uh, so uh, there were very, like, so many um, places uh, with departments, Slavic studies departments um, there, and uh, I was extremely surprised that when the war started in my country, they were just unable to produce uh, anything coherent or anything that would be a good analysis of what was happening. It was a huge problem. It was uh, like at these presentations, I tell this anecdote, which was a true story actually, that uh, the, the scholar who was studying Ukrainian 19th century literature was contacted by a journalist and asked to comment on Ukrainian politics. And uh, she um, kindly uh, rejected uh, the wonderful invitation because she just uh, did not follow it very closely. It was not exactly her uh, area of interest. But uh, it was not just her, it was, it was like all over the place. We went to New York, we went to think tanks, and uh, uh, people were mostly saying that they don't exactly know what's happening at best. At the worst, uh, they were, uh, th there would be scholars who would come uh, with the Russian agenda in mind or just specializing just in Russia, which is a general problem in, in the American academia. It's uh, all the post-Soviet space, just like Soviet space, is often perceived through one country and uh, even, you know, um, restricted to, I would say, most of the European part of that country. Not that people know much about Sarata, for example. Um, so when, when they try to talk about Ukraine, they just, uh, they impose their visions of how things should work uh, based on Russia to Ukraine and then Ukraine just looks like something extremely strange and disorderly. And this really reflected in the American press. So for all Ukrainians who were in the US at the time, it was a very difficult moment because uh, we really felt like we don't have a voice, that we are underrepresented, and that people are not listening to us because people with authority, uh, people who had positions, they were telling something very different, or at best they were saying they don't know. Uh, so this is this was the moment when I really understood how important it is that Ukrainians somehow promote their voices. And uh, uh, Internews Ukraine, uh, the organization for which I work now as a, a development manager, it, uh, it performs this task uh, and it does so on the international arena. And uh, one of its projects that has been doing this continuously is uh, Ukraine World. Uh, I guess uh, Volodymyr will be able to tell more about that. Uh, they, it, it's an information resource for, uh, which was created for journalists, mainly for professional community, gathers professionals, uh, but also for wider public. And there you can, this is a place where you can go if you want to understand what's happening in Ukraine. And this is where you get in touch with Ukrainian actors. You know, sometimes in academic publishing, when you have books like this, it would, there would be a workshop, for example, before that, where authors would get together, they would get in dialogue with each other, so uh, uh, it, uh, they know a little bit what, what everybody is doing. Here, uh, it was more like an open question that they had to answer. How would you talk to foreigners about Ukraine? Uh, and uh, amazingly, uh, they produce texts which are in dialogue with each other. So they uh, talk about, uh, there, there is a number of topics that they uh, talk about and uh, the approach from different angles and this is uh, one of the strengths of the book, I think. Uh, so we have here very different professionals, I would say, intellectuals of very different types, including, you know, historians, including writers, uh, political scientists, uh, defense studies specialists. Uh, we, ha we have men, women, we have uh, people who come from Donbas, people from the Crimea. Uh, so it's a mix. Uh, we have Jewish voices here, of course, too. Uh, so we really try to make this wide range and finally show that uh, one narrative about Ukraine is uh, is a severe underrepresentation of everybody else who is there and who can also speak for themselves. So it's, it's a matter of voices, and the voices were very important for us. Um, so I, I hope that you find it interesting, and uh, I hope that 
you know, what this creates is that the reader can always find um, something that appeals particularly to him or her. Uh, there would be texts that maybe are less interesting, some are more interesting, but something will just, there will be a text that will be a hook for <laughs> the reader, I hope so. Um, of course, for me, they are all amazing. Um, anyway, um, I think Vladimir will be able to uh, comment better on the structure and on the authors, so I will pass the word to him. Thank you very much, Ina. I uh, enjoy the, uh, the greetings and thank you so much for coming here. My name is Volodymyr Yilmolenko. I'm a Ukrainian uh, philosopher, book writer and journalist. And indeed, uh, we, we did this book very quickly. It took us four months generally to produce the text, to translate them into English, to edit them and to publish them. So it was kind of a very sprinter project. And in this case, it was very risky. But on the other hand, uh, I think it was, it was worth doing, of course. And this book, you just hear from the title that maybe one of the ideas, one of the key ideas is plurality. So we're not talking about the history of Ukraine, we are rather talking about histories. Uh, we are not talking about identity, we are talking about identities. We are not talking about uh, some, you know, idea of Ukraine or national idea. We, we are talking about national ideas. And I think this is one of the most interesting thing about current Ukraine. It is so plural, so diverse. Uh, as Yula said, this is not a book only by historians and for historians or by philosophers and for, for philosophers. It's very interdisciplinary. In this, can, in this sense, it maybe goes into different directions and it's again very, very interesting. But we start with history. The first chapter is called Histories and we have two texts by famous Ukrainian historic, historians who you, who of course, know very well by Yaroslav Hrytsak and uh, an interview with Sergei Plohi. And Hrytsak is just an amazing text. Uh, I'm calling it uh, Ukraine's History in 10 pages or maybe 15 pages. So it's called uh, a brief but global history of Ukraine. Uh, if you if you want to enter these historical narratives, I advise you start with this text. Then with Plochi we talked uh, about identities, about Cossacks, about uh, the relation of Rus and Ukraine, and it's also very interesting. So we go like deeper in the past. The next section is called Identities, and it also has two texts by two Ukrainian writers. One, Yuri Andropovich, is like what we call a patriarch of Bubabu, or patriarch of Ukrainian contemporary literature. And he is very Galician-centered, centered on this Austro-Hungarian uh, um, legacy, and of course very Ukrainian-centered. He, he writes in Ukrainian. And Andrei Kurkov, who you probably also very know very well, one of the most famous Ukrainian writers, who is a Russian-speaking writer mostly. So it's, it's again was very interesting to put these two people in, in the same section. Uh, the section Archetypes, here is my text and the, the text of Andrei Bondar, a Ukrainian contemporary writer. And we try to kind of from literally philosophic perspective think about some key elements or what we call key archetypes of Ukrainian history. Of course, it's very subjective, but, uh, but very interesting. The next section, stories. Uh, here comes the like, two personal stories of two great uh, young Ukrainian writers, Irena Karpa and Hans uh, It's If you want to have a personal touch of Ukraine, if you want to hear rather the stories, the personal stories, you'd rather start with this section. Aska Shiyan just this year received the European, Prize, uh, European Union Prize for Literature for Ukraine. <coughs> and her story, for example, is very vivid. And it's a story about foreigners that are coming to Ukraine, what, what they see with their eyes. Uh, in, instead, Irena Karpa tells a story of her family through wars, uh, Soviet period, um, etc. The, the next section, Motherlands, also there are stories from the families. Here we have Vartan Kebulaz's story that comes from his her family and talks about, for example, uh, Greek Greeks in Donbass or, or about Holodomor. But then go, sorry, goes to 
I'm just sometimes too excited. Uh, go goes to a to current period and um, the difficult relations of 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 our, our us Ukrainian people with the Soviet past. So the motherlands. Also another text from this section is by Larisa Dedesenko, also a very well known Ukrainian writer and lawyer. Uh, also, there is a much talk about this, the, the relations with the Soviet legacy because, uh, as Vartan just said uh, in Berlin, we have two motherlands. All of us have two motherlands because we were born in the Soviet Union and we are living in, 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 in Ukraine, independent Ukraine, and it's a very difficult and interesting story. The next section is called Paints, and here there are two major paints of current Ukraine, Donbass and Crimea. So we have a, a text by Volodymyr Rafienko, who is a Donetsk writer, Russian-speaking writer initially, very integrated into Russian literary culture, but who moved, who, who, who was uh, uh, who didn't uh, accept what happened in 2014, who didn't accept this Russian aggression, and he, he moved to Kiev. Now he wrote the first novel in Ukrainian, but again he tells the story of Donbass, a literary story, also a personal story, how he sees it, what Donbass is and was, the question of languages, the question of people, whether Donbass was integrated into Ukrainian culture, Russian culture. So this is, these are very interesting stories. And uh, an interview with Alim Aliyev about Crimean Tatars and Crimean Tatar identities was also very, very important because now Crimean Tatar identity is a part of this bigger Ukrainian civic identity, I would say. The section relations talks about relations with the Poles, and this is an interview with Oleg Natyuk, those for, for, of you from Poland or who are dealing with Ukrainian Polish relations, of course, know this name. And uh, Ukrainians and Jews, an interview with Leonid Finberg, who is the head of Judaica Jewish Studies in Kiev Mihail Academy, also the person to talk about this. And the last section is, we call it stereotypes, and this is, the, there is a text by Andriy Parnov uh, about stereotypes of Ukrainian Germany, so it's a very interesting read. And the final text is by Hanna Schellest, uh, an expert in security studies, about what she calls Ukraine's insecure security. So, um, again, we are very happy to be here, and of course the link to Andriy Portnov is very important to us, and the fact that he uh, agreed to, to, to join this book, we are very grateful for it, uh, and for, for, for the invitation. That's why we are here, of course, so when we thought about Germany, we, we couldn't miss the front of the so thank you so much. But, but you see from the structure of the book that it comes from some very deep historical things and it goes to the present. We didn't want to make the book only about Crimea Donbass, only about the war, only about you know, the current events. Because for us, it's, when we talk to journalists, we understand, okay, there are many people who understand what is going on, who have their interpretations, but it's always important to look into the legacies, into, into, into what comes from the past. So I will stop here, and of course we are ready to answer your questions, not only about the book, but about the general, general issues. general um, um, discussion, I would ask Martin to maybe explore or explain his article and maybe <laughs> give an example of uh, one article. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, we published this book in uh, English, but we are German in here, and I would, uh, at first I would like to say uh, some words in, in German. Uh, in erster Linie, I would like to thank you for the Einladung and for the Möglichkeit. Uh, it's a little louder. Like, don't whisper. It's working. It's working. Okay, if I try to talk down, a whispering philosophy. <laughs> 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 In erster Linie möchte ich mich herzlich bedanken für die Einladung und für die Möglichkeit hier in Deutschland, in Frankfurt am Oder zu sprechen. Ich glaube für uns, äh, es ist sehr wichtig, äh, dieses Buch äh, in Deutschland zu präsentieren und in verschiedenen äh, Auditoriums. Also das, das für mich war es eine, eine interessante Erfahrung äh, in Berlin, in Frankfurt am Main und in Frankfurt am Oder über äh, diese, äh, dieses Buch zu diskutieren. Äh, in Berlin, es war in, einem, in, ein, in einer Buchkneipe, in einem Lokal, 
am Fabend Fra äh, äh, am, 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 am Buchmesse, an der Buchmesse und hier an, an der Uni. Ja? Für mich an der Uni, äh, als es, äh, ich, ich, bin, äh, ich bin angewohnt, äh, an, an der Uni zu sprechen. Ja? Ich bin Professor an der Uni, aber die ganze, die ganze Erfahrung war sehr interessant und äh, ich freue mich, dass dieses Buch so große Interesse hier in Deutschland äh, erreicht. Ja? Und äh, viele, viele, viele Leute dafür interessieren und das, das war für uns äh, sehr angenehm und das war für uns äh, eine, 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 eine sehr große und äh, gute Erfahrung. Uh, aber wir haben das Buch auf, Eng auf Englisch publiziert, deshalb äh, spreche ich weiter äh, auf Englisch über, über meine persönliche Erfahrung. Uh, so, uh, it, was, it, it was very interesting for me, and it was very amazing to, to work in this project, uh, especially with, uh, with the other people who, who, who wrote this book. Um, And uh, at first, I would say about it, uh, about um, my point of view, my my con concept of this book and uh, of our mission. Uh, I would say um, I I thought uh, that the ma main task of uh, of the generation of of my generation of the intellectuals in, in Ukraine uh, was to to tell to Ukrainian people about the world. Because after, uh, after the Soviet experience of the totalitarian uh, country, which was closed, yeah, uh, uh, we, we had an opportunity to speak uh, freely about uh, different topics, uh, about philosophy, culture, literature, music, uh, etc. And it was, I, I thought it was the main task of us at the beginning of the 21st century to tell, as I said, to tell the Ukrainian people, especially for, for the students at the different Ukrainian universities about Germany, about USA, about phenomenology, about, uh, about rock music, jazz, uh, other different topics. And I used to say to my students that I am not uh, First of all, that I am not a teacher or a philosopher, uh, that I am an uh, agent of influence. Yeah, it was, it was uh, the man of uh, newspaper Pravda, about the, the old people who try to tell the Soviet people about, uh, about, about Western civilization, about the free world. Yeah. But at the, at the beginning of the 21st century, I recognized that uh, we have another task, and, and it was your idea, it was idea, um, already know that now we should tell the people all over the world about Ukraine. We should find our own voices and we should find the opportunity to tell our own story and our own, our, our own stories yeah, and our own histories about our country. And the second, uh, the third task of this book, I would say, and uh, we, we should publish, uh, we shall uh, uh, publish it in, in uh, Ukraine also, It's to tell the Ukrainian people about Ukraine, because uh, I think that one of the um, one of the bad and the main part of the Soviet heritage uh, is the disintegrated society, and we should integrate our society. Uh, and um, this uh, one, 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 one of the method of this integration is, is to tell uh, to tell stories about ourselves. To each other, so I think this book have, uh, had this task to tell to tell the world uh, about Ukraine, to tell you the Ukrainian people about Ukraine, about Ukrainian history. And back to my uh, essays, there are this part, uh, the name of this part is Motherlands in, in plural, all, all, all texts are in plural, all parts are in plural, uh, and I would say um, something about my. My, my essays, my presentation, my, my text in this book. Uh, the title of this, uh, of this uh, text, Gaining a Motherland, and uh, it's, it's, it's very important for me this idea that uh, really we, all, all authors of that book, and probably all citizens of Ukraine, uh, in my generation, my, of my generation, uh, have two motherlands, yeah, Soviet Union and uh, modern Ukraine. 
and I, uh, I would say probably uh, just a little bit aggressive uh, shortly that I, I hate my first, first motherland, I hate the Soviet Union. Uh, and now I'm learning to love my new motherland in modern Ukraine. And it takes that, this text about hate and love, about my hate to Soviet Union and my love for my uh, new motherland. And uh, about this uh, painful but very important experience uh, of gaining a motherland. Yeah? And uh, the, the main topics of, of my, my text is uh, it's not, it's not uh, I, 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 I wrote this text not like a philosopher but uh, it's, it's a personal it's a personal story it's a personal story of my of my family uh, it's a personal story of my own experience in, in the modern ukraine it's uh, it's a story about uh, holodomor yeah? it's a story about two maidans in, in, uh, in ukraine it's a story about ukrainian language and its role in our emancipation from russian empire and uh, so it's, it's a personal story with a personal touch, but uh, I'm a philosopher and I cannot do it without uh, different philosophical reflections about it. So I would say it's, uh, it's some kind of personal philosophical story about my own experience in Soviet Union and the modern Ukraine.